Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Saturn, and specifically some of the new discoveries in regards to the rings of Saturn and the mystery of their formation, because at least one study that was released not so long ago has actually tried to explain how they were created, while also explaining some other observations from Saturn and from the rest of the solar system, helping us understand what exactly happened here, why these rings appear relatively young, and how they're most likely going to end. But I guess let's start with the obvious. What is this mystery? Well, when it comes to these particular rings, if you were to compare them to some of the other rings in the solar system, they're definitely very different. So for example, as we've recently discussed in one of the videos about James Webb images, the Jupiter rings look extremely different. And very recently, James Webb also revealed the rings of Neptune. They also appear very different from Saturn, as do the rings of Uranus. They're also very, very old. Whereas the rings of Saturn are only believed to be about 100 million years old, at least based on some of the recent studies. And though the rings here might have been created from some kind of an asteroid or a relatively large rock falling apart because of the tidal forces, to create these massive rings around Saturn, it would actually require something much, much larger. And also, the actual composition here is different as well. The rings around Uranus, Neptune and Jupiter are relatively dark. That's actually why they're so hard to see. They mostly contain very dark sooty compounds and quite a lot of carbon. This, on the other hand, seems to be very bright and also seems to be mostly icy, suggesting that all of this was produced from entirely different types of material. And then the other unusual feature is in regards to what's known as inclination. This beautiful video by James O'Donoghue kind of explains this in a little bit more detail. So we know that Earth has the inclination of about 23 degrees, and it's actually somewhat similar to Neptune and Saturn. And then we know that Uranus has a 97 degree inclination, very likely produced by a large collision billions of years ago. But Jupiter's inclination is only 3 degrees, and because Jupiter is extremely similar to Saturn, it is somewhat difficult to explain at first. But the recent two studies you can find in the description do a pretty good job at explaining all of this, and it only involves one single scenario. And more importantly, explains the large rings of Saturn that were created not so long ago. And it all starts with the effects of various planets in the solar system as they orbit around the Sun. For example, we know that massive planets like Jupiter have a lot of effects on various objects in the solar system, very often creating a lot of different types of resonance. But the same applies to less massive planets as well, and that includes planets like Neptune. There are actually quite a lot of different transneptunian objects with a resonance, where essentially, because of various interactions with Neptune as it orbits around the solar system, the objects, such as Pluto, assume a kind of a pattern which creates permanently stable orbits as long as nothing here changes. And resonance can generally create some very beautiful orbital patterns if observed for very long periods of time. And it just so happens that there is another type of resonance that seems to be affecting Saturn as Neptune orbits around the solar system. And here, if we were to compare the wobbles of orbital precessions of Neptune, which can be visualized this way, seems to be very similar to the rate at which Saturn wobbles around its rotational axes, which appears this way. So the actual period between this and this is very similar implying a resonance between Saturn and Neptune. At least that's what the scientists believed up until this relatively recent study. In this case, the scientists wanted to use some of the recent data from, for example, the Cassini mission that used to orbit around Saturn to determine if this is still the case, with the new evidence suggesting that there's definitely some kind of a discrepancy from what's expected. Or in other words, suggesting that something has changed with the current wobble being a little bit out of sync. And as the scientists started to speculate why, they realized it could also have led to the formation of the rings as well, with the explanation in this case involving another object that used to exist here, in this case they gave it the name Chrysalis, which used to be very likely a relatively large moon of Saturn that eventually fell apart, created the rings, with most of the moon eventually ended up inside Saturn. But how exactly did all of this start? So in the beginning, billions and billions of years ago, before the rings existed around any of the planets, the inclination of Saturn was probably very similar to the one around Jupiter, possibly about 5 degrees. And the moon Titan here was also much, much closer, with this hypothetical moon very likely being a lot farther away. At this point, because of the orbits, Neptune's wobble is in perfect resonance with the wobble of Saturn's axes. But as Neptune orbited around the solar system over a period of several billions of years, the spin axis started to change, mostly because the Titan was also migrating slowly away from the planet and had a very minor gravitational influence on the planet itself. 
But over a period of several billion years, as the axis grew larger and larger, and as Titan moved away farther and farther from the planet, at some point the scientists believed that Titan experienced an unusual change in orbit that was completely unexpected, which they believed might have happened because there was another relatively large moon in this location, and the interaction with that moon resulted in Titan suddenly moving much much farther away from Saturn, and the other moon very likely making its way towards Saturn, eventually becoming tidally disrupted and possibly falling into Saturn itself. But this sudden migration away from Saturn very likely resulted in Saturn no longer being in resonance with Neptune because of the sudden instability that was caused by the interaction of these moons. And it was only over time that the axis stabilized a little bit, reaching its current tilt of 26.7 degrees. Or I guess in slightly simpler terms, there used to be two moons here, relatively large moons, with one being much closer to Saturn and one being farther away. The larger moon, Titan, was slowly moving away from Saturn and at some point interacted with the smaller moon. That interaction resulted in that smaller moon losing its orbit and falling into Saturn with approximately 90% of it crashing onto the surface and about 10% forming the particles that create current rings. And at the same time it also caused the Saturn to become slightly more destabilized in terms of the wobble of its axes. And because we also know that Saturn has currently the most moons in the solar system, there are currently 82 confirmed moons, it shouldn't really come as a surprise that there was another one that disappeared into Saturn itself. More importantly, it would also explain why there are such unusual, very large and icy rings around Saturn, but also gives a pretty good reason for yet another mission to this particular system. By studying the rings directly, we basically get an opportunity to study some kind of an ancient moon that used to exist here because these particles are very likely just the leftovers from that initial collision. And based on hundreds and hundreds of different simulations that were ran in this particular paper to try to determine how all of this happened, currently the one that involves a hypothetical moon chrysalis seems to make the most sense. It explains the unusual almost resonance with Neptune, it explains why the rings are so young, and also of course explains everything we know about Titan, including its unusual orbit and why it's moving away from Saturn as well. With all this being a relatively recent event in terms of astronomical times, maybe about 160 million years ago, so basically when the dinosaurs were still around, with the hypothetical chrysalis moon possibly being about 2% the total mass compared to our own moon, or maybe about 1% compared to Titan. So it wasn't really that massive or that big, but it was definitely influential. Although these are all just assumptions for now, and a lot more investigations and studies are needed, and specifically the studies of the rings themselves, in order to determine more detail about this particular moon. And so at least for now it's a pretty good theoretical explanation of how the Saturn most likely acquired its rings, and obviously also shows us how much effect different planets have on one another as they orbit around the solar system. Because if it wasn't for Neptune and if it wasn't for the influence from Titan, none of this would most likely happen and none of this would exist. But at least for now, that's I guess all we know. Once the scientists discover something else about the rings of Saturn or find something else about this hypothetical moon that existed here, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.